All right, orange. You ready? Okay, I need an orange player. Somebody else. Huh? Uh, yeah, that would be good. Simple, effective uh, techniques. Good impact points, simple swings that make what you want, where you want to go, and being on balance. Move and be on balance. Those are the real key things you need to do. Even if you just do, okay, we're gonna, this is serve, this is return, this is a basic rally. I, I can tick some boxes, I can start writing things. Combine it what's, with what's already out there on the internet with a lot of other things in terms of um, uh, competencies, and you can write something quite, quickly and quite simply, right? And you'll, you'll um, modify it and change it. I found out the problem. You got my racket. Well, that's an interesting one. We probably do, but this, remember, this is an interesting thing on orange. Don't forget, this is dead space for your lessons, especially if you're an indoor facility, right? If a kid's playing here, they almost never go there, right? So that is actually a place back there that you can do some other things, all right? Remember, for me, it's, thanks, it's 11 steps from there to the net. You take 11 steps from there, the net comes to about here, that gives you a service box. So if you need to create more space, right, you've got a space going across the back of the court. If you're in a dome, probably not, but in a facility like this, You've got a channel back here you can do some work on. A service box versus a whole end. All right? Okay, so, um, parameters that we had before. The kid should be able to, let's go to serve. The kid should be able to direct the serve to the forehand side and to the backhand side. Not like that, yeah? But they should, a few times out of 10. It's gonna take them, remember, probably four to five months to transition from one court to the next. Four to five months to transition from one court to the next. And you're gonna do things like, do it from the service line, go back to the baseline, do it from the service line, sometimes with a red ball, sometimes with an orange ball. The kid doesn't just get picked up and move from one color to the next instantly. All right, so you gotta think about that. Most programs that I know have a transitional orange group which means for 10 to 12 weeks, those kids might be in that particular area, okay? All right, so what does the ball have to do to, what do we have to do with the ball to make it go there? We obviously now need to make the swing bigger. That's our serving bit, yeah? So we're gonna make our swing bigger and make the serve go over there. But then we have to start thinking about linking things together. So what would you wanna do? You would wanna, if we, if we Legend. See, that's competitor, isn't it? All right? So, if you think now, what I said before, so serve, we would just serve to the forehand, serve to the backhand. Now, when we are on orange, we wanna link shots together. So we're always gonna practice. So if, for example, I go serve out there, the next shot, oh, I might struggle with this racket, but. Okay, so if I serve out there, out. Do you know Larry? Okay, so if I can get a serve out there, the next shot's going to go down there. All right? If I can go a serve to the middle, if I can go serve to the middle, right, the next shot might go back behind. Now, you're going, well, hang on a minute, my kids can't direct the ball to the forehand and the back end. Now you're telling me to do all these things. At the end of orange, Right? So what does that mean? We break it down, yeah? yeah? We're gonna break it down. We're gonna spend time working on, can I get the ball to that point? Can I serve the ball to his forehand? Yeah? That might be five weeks, six weeks, whatever, yeah? Can I change the direction of the ball? That might literally be, right, I'm gonna hit it to you, you're gonna hit down the line, okay? That might just be, he's gonna step up and go down the line. Yeah? So what you do is then deconstruct the pattern and go through it, right? And each bit of that pattern might take four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, whatever. 
don't, don't look at it and go, oh my God, they can't do it. And the other thing to do is, don't have a cart that looks like this. Where's the Red Bulls? Oh. Your cart should always look like this. Mike, do you want to, your job is to get the ball to his forehand. You can choose whether you serve from here or you serve from here, or even if you serve one step in front if you want to, Mike. Okay. Um, and you can choose um, if you use a red ball or use the orange ball, whichever one you like. Which actually on a serve might not make a big difference. All right. But on a rally it might. Give you a story about that in a minute. So don't now force kids, this is your ball, this is what you must use, right? Instead, be task based. So you understand what task based means? Task based learning means I'm going to set you a mission. Your mission is to do this. Use any equipment you like, any ball you want, right? But your mission is to do this. So, a good example, right? So I, as, as Isu said, you know, I've been working with um, Sport Time, right? And so I went to Randall's yeah, eight weeks ago, okay? And I saw a lot of very interesting orange ball players, right? So we went onto the court and we got six kids and we said, sorry, you need to be there. We said, okay, right, we want you to uh, rally the ball six times over the net. Okay, so they're here, and it kind of looks like this. Yeah, you can move. Come on, I did all that athletic training with you earlier. Okay, so it kind of looked like that. So the six balls never went over the net. So then we said, right, you can choose if you want to do this ball or these balls. You serve from, do it from that line or you do it from that line. Pull the balls there, your choice. And by the way, every time you get six, you get a clothespin. Does everyone understand how we use clothespins as little rewards? Yeah. Right, you get a clothespin. You've never seen the use of clothespins? Yeah. So um, get a whole bag of clothespins. Kids will like kill each other to win a clothespin. And they can clip them. They, they just have points. They, they literally will clip them to their shirt. Uh, I had some really good ones and I left them in. Where was I last week? Florida, I left them in Florida, right? So you, they clip them to their shirt, they clip them to their sleeves. You can get some fancy colored ones if you like. Um, but they use them as points. So it's like every time you do six, you get a clothespin. So now you choose the ball, you choose the point you do it from, you just have to be successful. So by the time I, what happened was, these two girls here, right? They rallied, they, they actually chose the red ball straight away. I didn't say anything. These girls here chose the orange ball. So of course, as soon as they'd got two clothespins, and these kids, remember these are all kids that probably played jello ball before we started the program. These kids here, they went, they've got two points. They all, these kids changed here. I didn't do anything. All I did was gave them options to be successful. And that's one of the key things we need to do. Once we get out of red, we need to give the kids the options to use different balls rather than force them. Because every time you go, right, you go, you're an orange ball player. You're only using orange balls, okay? Right. He's gonna go, I want me green, I, 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 I want me green. <laughs> I want me green, yeah? And then you go, well, you're not good enough. Yeah, I am. But if actually you give him different balls and you say, right, the job is to do six, the job is to connect this pattern, the job is to do this. Equally, you know, you could, you could actually break it down to throwing and catching if you really wanted to the racket out of the equation if you really wanted to. But that's where you have to start being a bit task-based and understand your missions. If you say the mission is to rally 10 balls and they can't rally 10 balls with orange, you give them a choice that they can rally 10 with this. And remember, we said learning was learning a feeling. So now I've, okay, I might quickly go, yeah, I'm, I'm confident now we've read. Girls especially need that. Boys, won't, boys will be a bit stubborn, you know? You know how sometimes you use these balls with adults in their lessons, right? 
you turn up and you go, you can use any ball you like, and there's a guy with a medallion and his shirt unbuttoned to here, and he goes, I'm only playing yellow. Right? And he's like, like this. He can't actually, I'm only playing yellow, like that, right? Sometimes the male ego gets in the way a little bit. The girls need to feel a little bit more confident most of the time, especially if they're transitioning. Okay? For girls, we're doing a big project with girls actually right now, trying to get um, all coaches to understand how to work more effectively with girls. Because look, at, look around us, right? There's not enough female coaches and most of us as male coaches don't have a clue what to work with, right? And remember, there's whole other, uh, female, female um, players have a need to be more connected, uh, build relationships, all those things are really important which we don't really understand as male coaches. So you have to understand this, this opportunity to use different balls out of choice is a really good one, especially for the girls, so they can feel competent. Remember, fun is feeling competent. If you feel like you can do something, I, I always ask this question, think of three things that you think are fun, and if I ask an adult audience, none of you will pick something you're not good at. Huh? Oh yeah, you're a special one though. We've already established you're the Homer Simpson of the group, right? So. Almost no one picks the something they're not good at, right? Okay, right, so we've got that on the serve, real simple patterns. We've now got to do some stuff on the ground stroke. So when we do rallies, obviously most of our rally stuff's going to be cross court. Yeah. Out. Okay. And the first thing we're going to have to establish Sorry, let me do some work. The first thing we're going to have to establish is a bit of consistency. We could be here a long time. All right? So, with inconsistency, one of the things is actually establishing the right height. So what I tend to do when I'm trying to get this going on is I'll be very trustworthy and I'll stand here in the middle. And I'll go, I need a haircut. Let's go, right? And, and first of all, they hit it like a mile in the air, and then gradually, once or twice I get hit, but it's only the orange ball. Normally, because it's when I didn't turn around fast enough, right? But they get that consistency of height over the net, rather than speed straight away, all right? And then once you've established that consistency, then you want to start establishing down the lines and cross courts. But when we do that, I saw this drill last night, okay? So, uh, you go cross court, I'll go down the line. Okay? What's it called? Brazilian? Never heard that one. Right. Okay, so you go cross court, I go down the line. What's the problem with this drill? Well, it should be cooperative, but there's too many egos in the way. <laughs> what's the problem with this drill? Fundamentally, what's the problem with this drill? Why is it, you're right coach, but why is it difficult? Yeah, it's not realistic. Like, I'm in a defensive position and I'm trying to change the ball to go down the line. Do you really want to teach that to a player? No. So you want to instead, it's really not a great drill. Right, instead we want to start with this. Let's go cross court. So foundation, principle, let's go cross court. Okay. And the simplest thing is, okay, if I'm here, where am I going to go? If I'm here, where am I going to go? Okay, so simple, yeah? So I'm just going to start a decision because everything's going to be connected now. So I'm trying to rally consistently cross court. Right. Oh, could have done that one, sorry. Okay, to get myself in a position to go down the line, right? We have, these kids are bright enough to make a decision. So we start with one, cross courts, down the lines, right? Okay, what else could we do? And the same principle, when else would I be allowed to go down the line? Okay, if it's easy, you're saying? Yeah, okay. One, another one. 
Okay, right, so the other thing would be to be very proactive and I've got to try and, so you try and take me off the side of the court and if I step over the sideline here or maybe over the sideline here, then he's allowed to change direction and go down the line, yeah? But there's, so that first week is simple. It's all about my end, if you think about it. This is, I receive this ball, I go cross court. I receive this ball, I go down the line. All right, now it starts to be about the other end. See that? Yeah? So now your job is to get me to go cross court. All right, so I've got to go, keep going cross court. He's got to try and, not quite, not yet, buddy. Yeah? So we're just going to work, now again, you go, hang on a minute, my kids can't do that. But my point is, okay, let's practice rally cross court. Let's establish rally cross court, right? Let's practice which balls am I going to go on an angle with? Yeah? Which balls am I going to go down the line with? Let's break the whole pattern down into bits and then just practice those bits. Yeah? And if you, if you understand, that's a basic goal of orange, right? Every time we rally cross court, we're not just rallying cross court to rally cross court, we're thinking about eventually this is going to become the basis of our pattern. Short balls go down the line, move him off, go down the line. 